I discovered my male's plan to claim my property after my husband's death. When Claire's husband Wallace passed away unexpectedly, she found herself navigating a sea of grief and confusion. But it was a secret she uncovered in the midst of her mourning that turned her world upside down. Little did she know, her mother-in-law Evelyn had a sinister plan to strip her of everything she held dear. Claire's life had always been a tapestry of love, warmth, and stability. Growing up in a small town, she cherished the simple joys of life, family dinners, Sunday picnics, and the unwavering support of her parents. When she met Wallace in college, she felt like she had found the missing piece of her heart. They married young, built a beautiful home together, and planned to grow old in each other's arms. Wallace was a loving husband, devoted father to their two children, Lily and Sam, and a successful architect. Their life was the epitome of happiness until tragedy struck one cold winter evening. Wallace, on his way back from a late meeting, lost control of his car on an icy road. The news of his death shattered Claire's world. Grief is a cruel companion, and Claire found herself drowning in its depths. She tried to stay strong for her children, but every corner of their house was a reminder of Wallace. The laughter they shared, the dreams they built it all seemed like a cruel joke now. Her only solace came from her parents and close friends who supported her through the darkest days. But there was one person whose presence felt more burdensome than comforting. Evelyn, Wallace's mother. From the moment Claire and Wallace started dating, Evelyn had always been critical of Claire. She'd often made subtle jabs about Claire's background, her career choices, and even her parenting skills. Wallace had always been the peacemaker, smoothing things over whenever tensions rose. In the wake of Wallace's death, Evelyn's visits became more frequent. She insisted she was there to help, but her words and actions spoke otherwise. She scrutinized every decision Claire made, from funeral arrangements to financial matters. Claire, still reeling from her loss, didn't have the strength to push back. One evening, as Claire sat in the living room going through old photo albums, Evelyn walked in unannounced. She had a look of calculated concern on her face, one that Claire had come to recognize over the years. Claire, we need to talk, Evelyn said, her voice laced with false sympathy. Not now, Evelyn. I'm trying to find some peace, Claire replied, not looking up from the album. This is important. It's about the house, Evelyn insisted, taking a seat across from Claire. Claire's heart skipped a beat. The house was more than just a building. It was the embodiment of her life with Wallace. She couldn't bear the thought of losing it. What about the house? Claire asked, her voice trembling. Well, dear, you know this house was originally bought with the help of Wallace's inheritance. I think it's only fair that it goes back to the family, Evelyn said, her eyes narrowing. Claire felt a surge of anger and betrayal. What are you talking about? This is our home, mine and Wallace's. We built our life here, raised our children here. You can't just take it away. Legally, I can. Wallace's will state that all his assets, including this house, should revert to his closest living relative if he passes away without a direct heir, Evelyn said, pulling out a document from her bag. Claire's mind raced. She hadn't seen Wallace's will. They had always been so focused on living in the present that they never thought about such formalities. But she couldn't believe Wallace would leave her and the children unprotected. Why are you doing this, Evelyn? What do you gain from taking away the only thing we have left of Wallace? Claire asked, tears streaming down her face. It's not about gain, Claire. It's about what's rightfully mine. You were never fit for my son, and you're certainly not fit to manage his legacy, Evelyn said coldly. Claire felt a wave of determination wash over her. She couldn't let Evelyn's manipulations take away her home, her children's sanctuary. She decided then and there that she would fight for her family, no matter the cost. Over the next few days, Claire sought legal advice, determined to challenge Evelyn's claims. She dug through old documents, hoping to find something that would invalidate Evelyn's argument. She also reached out to Wallace's old friends and colleagues, hoping they might have insights into Wallace's intentions. One afternoon, while rummaging through the attic, Claire stumbled upon an old, dusty box. Inside, she found letters and journals that Wallace had kept over the years. As she read through them, she felt his presence, his love, and his unwavering commitment to their family. But among the papers, she found something that made her heart stop a letter addressed to her, written just a few months before Wallace's death. Dear Claire, if you're reading this, it means I'm no longer with you, 
and my heart aches at the thought of the pain you must be feeling. I want you to know that you are the love of my life, and I cherished every moment we spent together. I've been meaning to update my will, but with work and life, it kept getting pushed aside. Please don't let anyone take what's ours. This home, our memories, they belong to you and the kids. I trust you to protect our legacy. Forever yours, Wallace. Claire clutched the letter to her chest, tears of relief and sorrow mixing together. This was the proof she needed. She knew Wallace's intentions and she would honor them. Armed with the letter, Claire confronted Evelyn. You can't take this house from us. Wallace wanted us to stay here, to keep our memories alive. Claire said, her voice steady and strong. Evelyn's face twisted in anger. You think a letter will stop me? This is far from over, Claire. The battle was long and arduous, filled with court hearings, legal wrangling, and emotional turmoil. Evelyn pulled every trick in the book, trying to discredit Claire and her claim. But Claire, driven by love and determination, stood her ground. In the end, the court ruled in Claire's favor. The letter, combined with testimonies from Wallace's friends and colleagues, proved Wallace's true intentions. Evelyn was forced to relinquish her claim, and Claire could finally breathe a sigh of relief. But the ordeal left scars. Claire realized the true extent of Evelyn's bitterness and how far she would go to get what she wanted. It was a harsh lesson, but it also made Claire stronger, more resilient. As she stood in the living room, looking at the family photos on the wall, Claire felt a sense of peace. She knew Wallace was watching over them, guiding them through the storm and she promised herself that she would honor his memory by living a life filled with love, strength, and resilience. Months passed, and Claire slowly rebuilt her life. She focused on her children, her work, and her own healing. She found joy in small moments and strength in the support of her friends and family. One sunny afternoon, as she sat on the porch watching Lily and Sam play in the yard, Claire felt a sense of contentment. She had faced the darkness and emerged stronger. And though the pain of losing Wallace would never fully fade, she knew she had the strength to carry on. Life has a way of testing us, pushing us to our limits, but it also has a way of showing us our true strength, revealing the depth of our love and resilience. Claire's journey was far from over, but she knew she could face whatever came her way, armed with the love of her family and the memory of the man who had given her everything. Years later, Claire would tell her story to her children, sharing the lessons she had learned, she would tell them about their father's love, their grandmother's betrayal, and the strength it took to protect their home. And in those moments, she would see Wallace's spirit shining through their eyes, a reminder that love, even in the face of adversity, can conquer all.